room for discussions. Um, open. Please just raise your hand and uh, um, tell your name and the usual format. Anyway, raise hand and in phantom theory you understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you like sense of water. Hello. Uh, so, sir, uh, everybody says that uh, source algorithm can break the uh, integer, but uh, it came in 2001 and uh, factored only the number 15. 2012, number 21. And after that, nothing. 2019, uh, 35 was tried and uh, still it was unsuccessful. And uh, as Mr. Prasoon uh, told uh, uh, just uh, some time back that RSA 1024 itself, millions of qubit will be required. And currently, the highest is like, uh, I think, uh, 127 uh, qubit from IBM and one more company is there, which has 256. So are we just creating a hype about quantum computer? Uh, at least, uh, I do not say it in like uh, next two decades. Because in last two decades, the maximum factorization was done for only 21. So uh, are we unnecessarily fearing it? Want of this, I'll take start. <laughs> anyway, uh, see, there is a what you call a, a kind of a, a commercial answer, and there is an academic answer. Uh, um, by and large, uh, you know, someday things will be factored. The current day 2048. Okay? The issue, I, I think the science is not worried about that. Um, both information security as a whole, anyway, there is a time for change. One of the things is that you, you change to new things, okay? So anyway, there was a time for uh, crypto change, public cryptography, okay? Um, that may be various reasons, okay? In fact, RSA itself, I used to say, it is a beautiful thing done by the three professors in a classroom sitting in half an hour, they would have finished it. But they immediately patented it, 1978, then published it in CSCM, and the rest of the thing is 50 years it has stood, 78, over 40 years, and made huge money for MIT and all the professors and so on. So there is a pressure perhaps to change anyway, uh, RSA. And ECC, it was attempted like that. You know, BlackBerry Phones company tried to advocate the use of uh, elliptical cryptography in Canada, Waterloo, one of the main schools of thought on that. Somehow didn't succeed, okay? BlackBerry Phones itself we don't hear of. So there are different uh, ways of thinking about it as a threat and other things. But more important, the as we saw, new tech science, new technology, everything has to be driven. So now quantum uh, science is driving a lot of things. So there will be many products, many spin-offs. That's what I also project. So in some sense, it will also be a endeavor to break 2048. And all this thing about uh, millions of qubits, uh, some of it is commercial, some of it is not scientific. Okay? So scientifically, one knows a certain number of large qubits are required. But not only that, you can get around that. It's also known. Reduce it. But then the more is the other uh, uh, physics difficulties of uh, decoherence and so on, which is also mentioned, even in communication. Uh, it's fraught with uh, many noisy endo, you know, environments and so on, which are, some of them are not known. But then uh, one can get around them also. So there are, you know, there will be interesting science and research and development going on. And then there will always be the hybrid models and so on. So one of the best papers, I think, was by Bernstein and so on. Why all this thing first about uh, 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 breaking in, in polynomial time with Shor? Okay? See, poly time for 2048 in, uh, is just a few seconds on a quantum machine. Why a few seconds? Do it in a couple of days. See, now I told you one extra flop, one petaflop year is the time for 2048, the best way. And I've attempted part of it in lower scales. Best way, today's technology, today's science. So obviously the answer is uh, trade-offs. So finally that's engineering, all about engineering, engineering and commerce. You don't want to break it in eight seconds, break it in eight days. In which case there are other solutions. So you bring in new coding corrections, error controls, do small, I, I mean, not, very roughly stated. One scientist won't say like this, but there are ways to work around, okay? which is what the exciting games will be. As far as 2048, Crack is concerned. Okay. That's all. Right. Of course, security-wise, there is one last angle that uh, legacy is. Uh, what is that? You you mentioned the word. Yes. You you store today, break tomorrow. Huh? Store now, decrypt later. Store now, decrypt later. 
wherever it's applicable, like countries sign some contracts of uh, exchange of prisoners or something with digital signatures, that is really secret for many years. So you can break it. So this is the uh, short answer. I'll just, uh, so I'll just add it to you, like add to Professor's point. Uh, first thing is that um, the number of qubits which are required, let's say for RSA 2048, is roughly around 10 million uh, noisy qubits. Okay, where we are, we are having about 100 qubits in general. Right, the companies which are working towards making scalable qubits, there are a few companies like Sci Quantum. There is Janadu, and all of them are aiming at 1 million qubits by 2526. In fact, that is the only product they are coming up with. So, like, as, as someone who is, like, you know, working in this, I would definitely f see that it is, scalability was a problem when people were going with iron trap based quantum computers or something, uh, NMR based quantum computers, they had limits. Scalability was a problem. But with photonic based uh, quantum computers, this is not a problem and is well accepted everywhere. Coming to your question about uh, uh, why we have to worry, I think it's we have to just look back at what advancement happened in computing. And I mentioned this is that in 1977, similar things were proposed. Why did you have to increase the bit size, right? To, 1024 or, or 2048 was because the, that day the uh, computing was mature enough to break the smaller key size, right? And that is what is happening even today. In fact, one of the proposals by Dr. Vaini is exactly that you have to increase the bit size so that you are safe uh, against quantum computers. But then that is required. That is has to be acknowledged. And uh, when in 1994, when the Shor's algorithm came, people said that it is a, it is something which will take a century. In less than 20 years, you had a quantum computer, even though small, but you had it. And now, uh, it is true that you have only have to worry when you date, when you want to have a confidentiality of five plus years, because, because 27 to 30 is the time when you have a large scale quantum computer. So if you have a data which has to be confidential for that much time, that is where you have to really worry about. Otherwise, it's just like a day, a data that is valid just for today. You don't really have to worry. So that is my answer to your question. Chicken, do you want to ask something? Uh, else, uh, some other idea? I have a question. You know, you mentioned uh, you can uh, break and you have a quantum computer in 2026. Yes. But my understanding is there is one challenge in quantum computing. Okay. Unlike the classic computing, if Dell builds or somebody else builds, the same algorithm works on both. Hmm. But in the quantum computer, that does not work. Because the universality, like what exists by Turing, hmm. does not exist in the quantum computing theory. If you change one machine, you have to redesign the whole thing. Is that still true or is it overcome? So, I mean, they, it is being addressed. Like, well, I'm, I'm, I believe your question is, do we have a general purpose you quantum... Have a universal yeah, general purpose machine. quantum machine. Peep, 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 no, I'm saying that, that it is being targeted. People are working on it. So that is my answer no, to it. targeting is an abstraction. It's not a clear building. Nobody right. Builds a universal machine. Right. I mean, yeah, you won't. Yeah, I just want to add something. I, I think you, uh, I, I think I understand what you're saying. And I guess the answer would be that even gen, uh, even designing a quantum software, there are you know no-go theorems against it in the sense that, because if I'm right, software, uh, let's say I have a number of, if I'm writing a program, I have if, else, loops, etc. So if I try to realize this quantumly, I have to keep adding ancillas and control operations, which will... Uh, Right. That does not exist in the yeah. So uh, yeah, in general, uh, uh, software friendliness is not there. Yeah, you're you're quite right. So I suppose one. That's a very serious problem. Of course, that's how quantum computing is thought to be addressed for certain algorithms. Absolutely. Not for a general. general yeah, computing yeah, yeah, in yeah. General, yeah. as of now, as yeah. and yeah. there's a lot of things that yeah. need to be worked between, right. of course, quantum yeah. mechanics and uh, yeah. Yeah. But I think what you mentioned, quantum information processing, is a big thing that should go through 
for a varieties of things, but it may not be completely connected with the quantum computing. That's where I think uh, headway like China yeah. builds a, a fiber optics or whatever that one is yeah. called. Quantum communication networks, yes. In fact, uh, in the rest, uh, surprisingly, uh, Microsoft which should have shown, uh, I, I was jokingly put um, quantum windows, quantum PowerPoint and uh, quantum MS Word and things like that, actually is silent. Uh, but uh, on the science front, apparently their uh, research teams are working on topological qubits or something, which is like something like uh, what you might be hinting at, like a von Neumann architecture uh, uh, machine you can build to scale and also matching. Uh, uh, no, always call a Alan's Turing machine model. <laughs> one, uh, one thing one, you implemented this concept. Oh, yeah, correct. Concept. No, no, the stored program concept. Correct. So the stored program conceptual thing with the qubit uh, match and a reconfigurable kind of a network is probably happening. And apparently Microsoft is going slow on, despite its deep pockets on the quantum machine itself. Unlike, you know, the Googles and uh, you hear them, yes. not uh, Microsoft. They tried something and then stopped. It's a question of circuit building now. Yeah, probably. The, the, but the correct point physics is uh, a different one. That, that's about it. I just wanted to add quickly that the universality theorems that you have in classical, see, for example, Church-Turing thesis holds good even in the quantum. Yeah. Quantum, uh, I mean, quantum computers don't affect uh, Church-Turing thesis. They don't even affect. No, no, for, uh, the Church-Turing th thesis is so robust. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Yeah, but in terms yeah. of. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I guess if I can summarize what, yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, can I ask a follow-up question on what Dr. Shamsundar said uh, right now? Yeah, <laughs> what is it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was just wondering, I, I think the point you raised was very interesting. And, and clearly, if you have to solve a new problem you need a new quantum algorithm and that is a non-trivial task it's not like we can take classical algorithm and just convert it into a quantum algorithm per se but uh, i think the question you were posing was suppose you do have a quantum algorithm so let's take the the factoring algorithm that shu has the question now is if there are two different uh, quantum machines, you know, you have the same number of qubits, but one is manufactured by D-Wave, the other is manufactured by Google, would the same algorithm work in both cases or would you actually need to implement it in two different ways? People can transfer them, but it is case by case, mm -hmm. not a general one. That's a serious advantage in the, like one language to another, I can change kind of a thing is not coming. In fact, this was one of the main problems in NMR. If you had designed one algorithm for uh, eight bits, and now if you have to redesign, it becomes a real problem. Right. See, uh, uh, you know, it, it, the people, there are workarounds. In fact, there is some universality of some sort like and or not gate, the quantum C not gate, for example, that's in principle, you know, the paper, everything, there is universality and all that. The realization in the actual getting circuit may be different uh, from the physics state, uh, the quantum state. But apparently, the algorithm porting will not be difficult. But as what he referred to as, the, I think, the quantum compilers, the front end and the back end, the input output to prepare the state for a quantum machine, and to be able to read out the quantum uh, state at the end of wherever you are uh, to relate it to the current problem result or the issues, uh, like in classical, the input output bottlenecks were there so, in earlier times and so on. I think more than that, right? What you're essentially saying is if you were thinking of doing things like debugging, that's really not something that you would be able to do in, in a very straightforward sense. I mean, from a very practical perspective. Yeah, in fact, uh, uh, finally to put it's one field at least if it will bring in a physicist and a computer scientist and a mathematician to work together to make a run a program, which has not been the case in our uh, current situation. First of all, getting them together is also difficult. Okay. No, but that's true, but you are going back to sort of punch cards, essentially, the same era in, 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 in some sense. But yeah, sorry, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, it's, it's, thanks for the pointing out. And I 
I think you know this debate has to go on and on, but we are uh, also uh, time. If uh, no pressing, uh, uh, you know, uh, hand ra raising. So we'll try to close this session with uh, thanks to all the panelists, uh, uh, Tapas and uh, Srikant and um, Aryan and uh, Devrai and Prasoon. Thank you, and thanks for all this. Thank you, sir.